Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn some game theory. Today's topic is how not to write a subgame perfect equilibrium. So this is another one of those minute sounding things that people will screw up on when they're new to game theory, and this will cause them to lose silly points on an exam or a homework. So as long as you follow the rules that I'm about to give you here, you won't lose those points for really a stupid reason. This is something I cover in Lesson 2.2 of Game Theory 101, the complete textbook. You can check the video description for more information about that. Now remember in the last video we were talking about the Escalation game, which looked like this, and we found that the subgame Perfect Equilibrium was for player 1 to accept and declare war, and for player 2 to escalate. Now you will often see people write this subgame Perfect Equilibrium not like this, but as just accept. And the reason for that is that in the subgame Perfect Equilibrium, notice the distinction here, in the subgame Perfect Equilibrium, player 1 accepts. That's what happens in the game. The game just starts with player 1 accepting, and that's the end of it. This is what we call on the equilibrium path, because that's what actually happens in the equilibrium. But off the equilibrium path, player 1, if player 1 were to threaten, player 2 would escalate, and then player 1 would declare a war. We actually need this sort of information in here to actually have a sensible subgame perfect equilibrium. So the reason for it is that a subgame perfect equilibrium is a complete and contingent plan of action. It must state what happens both on and off the equilibrium path. The reason that this is so important is that if you just say that the equilibrium is player one accepts, that doesn't tell us why player one is accepting, right? If we just say that player 1 is accepting, well then we know he gets 0 and player 2 gets 0, but there's no indication why this is a rational move for player 1. And the reason that it's rational is because if player 1 threatens, then this causes player 2 to escalate, which causes player 1 to declare war, and then player 1 ends up getting negative 1 for that. So the only way we can judge the usefulness and the, the quality of the outcome where player 1 just accepts and ends the game is by knowing what happens if player 1 chooses something else. What are the alternatives that player 1 could choose? And if we have that the full subgame perfect equilibrium is for player one to accept and then declare war, and then for player two to escalate, then we know that the reason that accept is good is because threatening leads to escalation, which leads to war, which leads to a worse outcome for player one than if he just chose to accept over here. So whenever you're writing out a subgame perfect equilibrium, remember to write everyone's strategies both on and off the equilibrium path of play. So the easiest way to figure this out if you're doing it right is to count the number of strategies that you write down in the subgame perfect equilibrium. So we have here accept as one, war as two, and escalate as three, and make sure that that matches the number of decision nodes in the game. So there's one decision node here, one decision node here, and one decision node here. Those are three decision nodes, and notice we have one, two, three strategies written out. So there's one strategy for every decision node. You have to have that whenever you're writing a subgame perfect equilibrium. So that is how you're supposed to write a subgame equilibrium and how you're not supposed to write one. And in the next video, we will talk about a uh, type of game or some kinds of games and how you can arrive at games that have multiple subgame perfect equilibria. Join me then. Take care.